We're well into October now, which is getting right towards the end of our lawn care season here in the upper Midwest of the United States. So I've lived with the Luba almost a complete cutting season now, so I'm going to give you my thoughts and experience with that in addition to some specific challenges that the Luba and just lawn mowing in general has in this later part of the season with our cool season grass. So the first thing for this time of year is moisture. We've got cool nights, which means a lot of dew on the grass that really most days does not dry up completely even with a windy day like today. Um, so we get some buildup on the Luba's deck. Now this challenge is not unique to a robot mower or the Luba. It's the reason I did past videos on non-stick coatings for mower decks. This one's actually pretty easy to deal with. I've learned after every mowing or every couple mowing, depending on how wet it is, we just take our Luba out, flip it up, and inspect the deck. And the stuck on grass comes out pretty easily. There are some nooks and crannies on this deck around some of these side guards. It's nice to have a screwdriver or something with you to get in there. Um, we can see here we even had a stick jammed in there. So I like to get that stuff out of there. If you do build up in these areas and have a significant build up under the deck, that will affect cutting performance. So you can see that's a pretty quick process if you keep up on it. If you let it go too long, say a couple weeks, things will get packed in there pretty tight and it'll take you a bit longer. The other thing is um, with the wet grass we can see right here, this cutting blade is not stuck out completely. So when we first install these, these blades are meant to be able to move. And so when the when the disc spins up, it puts them out perfectly perpendicular with centripetal force. If we get a grass buildup, they do not stay out fully or able to move. They kind of jam in place. So I've noticed what I like to do is spray a little WD-40 in there and move them around and get them uh, moving again. If we leave them like that, the cutting performance will be sacrificed. So an alternative to this obviously is you could remove the fastener and clean up underneath, which when I change cutting surfaces, that's what I do. But in between those surfaces, this seems to work pretty good freeze these up um, and I'm on the third cutting surface of the blade so I still have the original blades on next year I think I'm gonna go a bit more frequently and change those I've waited until cutting performance suffers to change them and I think every three weeks is appropriate about to change these over and they're pretty low cost I do have another set that came with it um, so for next year, I'll probably order another one and just change that cutting surface a bit sooner. And they've got four of them because both sides and then half of each side you use. So you can flip it and then reverse it also. Um, the other thing that I like to do is just seems to help is just put a light coating of this WD-40 on the entire deck. That helps prevent a little bit of that grass buildup. After you flip it up like that to service the blades, the lube is locked. It, it referenced that somebody picked it up or tipped over something like that. So you have to come to the machine and press home and start if you want it to go back to the charging station. So it'll go through its alignment thing here and go back to the charging station. One of the other challenges with relatively uh, wet part of the year is this. Why? So as part of its GPS finding itself, it does this spin maneuver out here. And this donut is worse than ever because of this type of year. Now they do give you this mat. The idea is you shave down the grass, 
spike this in place and let the grass grow up through this and it provides some extra resistance to the mower when it's doing that donut piece. I did put this down originally um, and then I had to move the charging station around to different spots to make sure I had signal. So I never got around to putting this back. Um, so maybe next spring I will put this in place now that I'm comfortable with the charging location uh, and hopefully prevent that donut. Now, one donut is frustrating enough, but I've got a second donut over here. And I was not really sure why for the longest time I had another donut out in the middle of the lawn here. I think I finally figured out why this is here though. I've got my RTK antenna up here on the end of the house. And if you remember originally where these garbage bags are now is where I had the charging station in an effort to put it somewhere under the eave where it was more protected from weather. And this is directly in line with that where that charging station was. So the Luba doesn't do this every time, but whenever I send the Luba to cut the lawn, on this side of where that old charging station was, it sits here and does a donut. So I sent it on its task. It's moving along the lawn to go to one of the cutting areas over there. And it did an odd multi-point turn there. But I actually think the latest software update has solved that problem. Instead of doing it spin, just like it did outside the charging station, it did some multi-point gyration. And I believe the latest software, software update that was just like a week ago fixed that, thankfully. So hopefully this grows back in. Um, the other fix that I believe would work to get rid of that weird gyration completely is to remap my entire lawn. So when I move the charging station from here to its current location, within the app, you can do a move charging station function. So somewhere in the program, it's still retained though that the charging station was once there and, and a weird programming glitch makes that happen. So again, in spring for next season, I plan, one of my plans is to put the extension bar out for the RTK antenna because I still occasionally lose signal on the RTK antenna uh, because it's not far enough out from the roof line. So that extension bar will help that. And because that, that RTK antenna is moving, I need to remap the entire lawn. So I'm gonna do that for next season. So that will effectively get the RTK antenna out from the house, I think a foot and a half or something like that. Um, and it improved the line of sight for that up to the sky. I had it on the peak originally, but then it gets closer to some trees. So I like this end. You've, I've got more open sky above it. But being on the lower end of the eave, the roof line and and the other part of the house, if we do the angle away from the RTK antenna, is still impacted a little bit. So getting it away, I think that'll improve things. I'll remap everything and then hopefully get rid of this weird donut gyration from where the charging station used to be, just completely wipe that memory. My motion has updated their software to now allow border passes around no-go zones, and this has have reduced the amount of string trimming I've had to do significantly. From the beginning of the season, the lawnmower would basically come up to here, turn around, and then go back and do its line, leaving a foot and a half or more of uncut grass around the no-go zones. Some other commenters have helped me on my past video say, if you now do three border passes, that's the tightest. So the first border pass starts on the outside and then subsequent ones get tighter and tighter to those no-go zones. So in your cut programming, if you select three border passes around your no-go zones, now it's easily 
one pass of the string trimmer and you've got your string trimming done and that's reduced the string trimming time at least by 50 percent so that's a big improvement that's one of the cool things about these wi-fi connected devices um, the only thing that still could be improved i think uh, main thing for the software is those border passes are all done in the same direction and the design of that luba and that it doesn't have airflow or lift to pull the grass up it tends to lay it over in that direction so when you're doing your stripes in your lawn you go down turn around come back and overlap the last one and get anything that was laid down now you're coming in the into the grain so cutting some of that uncut grass with the border patrol passes i wish it did a loop turned around and then went the opposite direction for each one so i think that would help the cut quality around the no-go zones and the borders hopefully that's something Momotion brings out in subsequent updates so you can see our leaves are changing color we're probably a week away from peak colors but I still do have a vast amount of green leaves up in trees. They have started to fall and there's a, some on the ground. It's going to get much worse. I basically have two months straight of leaves falling. So that's a big part of my end of year lawn care. Uh, I get so many that if I left them on the lawn, they'd smother the grass and kill it. So I don't have an option. I have to get them off the lawn. In the past, I would do a combination of my riding lawnmower, bagging them, and then blowing them off with my backpack leaf blower. The Luba does not give us the option, obviously, to bag, and it has very little mulching action. Um, but the leaves don't prevent it from mowing. They, they can run across it, mow the grass just fine. We take a look at it mowing now. We can see for the most part, it just leaves the leaves alone so what I've decided to use do this year is just abandon bagging completely um, that had its challenges anyway that's no free lunch there the amount of times I had to stop and empty those bags you know sometimes I'd go 10 20 feet or two passes and, and have to empty those bags so it was a lot of back and forth and I'd use end up using the backpack floor quite often anyway so does this cost me more time this this time of year? I think it's basically a wash. It's just different. I already had the backpack blower. Um, but if you relied on bagging your leaves completely, you're going to have to do something different. One thing that makes my life uh, a little bit easier is I've got woods or forests surrounding uh, three quarters of my lawn. So I use my backpack blower to blow the leaves up and into that woods line to get rid of them. I don't need to collect them and take them somewhere. Um, I am within the city limits that they provide a service with a vacuum truck to, to pick them up. But what I found if I leave them sitting on the front of my lawn like that, I got burnt last year where they sat so long it, it killed that grass. So I'm just abandoning that, that whole thing and blowing them into the woods. Here's an area of, of more leaves that the mower just came through and, and there's some mulching that was done. We can see some smaller leaf pieces mixed in there, um, but it's not going to do a whole lot. Another thing that comes up occasionally is, is reliability of this. So I can already speak from my own experience. I've had no problems with it, uh, just maintaining those cutting edges and cleaning up the underside of the deck. I've not had uh, one hiccup mechanically or electronically with this device. At the same time, I do know that there's basically no repair or service options inside the U.S. This thing shipped directly from Hong Kong to me via Amazon. And there's nobody within the states that services or maintain these, much less can even get repair parts. So I've not contacted Momotion about repair parts. But I don't think they're very available. So I'm a fairly mechanically inclined person. I do all vehicle maintenance myself, have a good set of tools to work on things. But realistically, uh, with this robot mower, if something fails, a uh, board fails, um, I'll take it apart and look at the board and maybe look on eBay or some other things to see if I can find 
a replacement board or battery for it, but the likelihood is very low. So if you need to go into buying this uh, Luba mower, assuming that if something breaks, you kind of SOL and, and contact the company and there's a warranty, maybe they'll do something, but I just assume I'm gonna have to buy another one or at that point, I'm probably not gonna wanna buy another Luba, but buy something else. Uh, if you're expecting service or repair for something like this, uh, don't buy it because you're not gonna get it. So Momotion does have decent little tutorials and some videos on the standard maintenance, changing out the blades, setting things up, things like that. So you're not completely on your own, but you're pretty much on your own. Now, one of the things, um, I do appreciate as they send out these reminders or pops up on the app, um, hey, it's the time of year to start thinking about winter, ma winter maintenance and what you have to do for your Luba during the winter months. And I live in an area, basically our lowest temperature, air temperature gets to be about minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit. So in this zone, they recommend I take down the RTK antenna and the charging station and bring that inside for winter. And I was planning on doing that anyway. So that's another reason why I'm going to wait to put the extension bar in the RTK uh, because I have to take it down for winter and remove that charging station. So I'm just planning on remapping the entire lawn in spring when I put those things back up. The key here is not to let water get into something and have it freeze over winter. So that's, I believe, the reason to bring it in. Also it cuts down on UV rays and months. I'm not using any of it anyway. Um, so that's my plan. I'm gonna take the power devices, everything with it, bring everything inside, um, let it dry up fully over winter and keep it out of the element. It took me a bit, but after a few months of having the luba and having it cut my grass, that part of stress or thought that, oh, I need to do something with the grass has left me and it's been very nice. I don't ever wake up in the morning and think, I wish I had some more things to do today. I keep pretty busy uh, with projects and things like that anyway. So this has freed me up to do more of those projects and improvements instead of just the maintenance. So I'm fully on board with this. Very happy with it. My experience has been good. Again, I don't think this is ready for the masses yet based on setup, um, what it took to map it, things like that. It works for me, but I understand it's, it's not going to work for everybody. And again, if I don't make that three year threshold on operation, if something breaks or fails before then, I'm probably not going to be very happy. But I've not run into any of that, so for the meantime, I'm happy um, and I'm going to continue to use it. And if you're willing to take a risk and you're a little bit handy and patient for setup, I'd recommend it for you also. If you think you're gonna open the box, plop this thing down on your grass and press go, um, that's not going to happen. Watch my previous videos to show what I went through to get this thing set up. Um, that should not be underestimated. Thanks for watching. Adios.